The anointing of the Holy Spirit wants you to be deaf to the voice of the world. It wants you to be deaf to what the world is saying. Yielding to the anointing. You are greeted in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I greet you all, those who are seated at home, watching us, watching us through all forms of media, YouTube, Facebook. You are greeted. We still love you very much. Tonight, I, I would like us to, to share one word that uh, I believe is very much important. You know, it's, we have spent weeks and weeks sharing about the Holy Spirit. But today I want us to focus on the... We're not done with the Holy Spirit. I don't think we'll be done. We can teach about the Holy Spirit the whole year. But today I want us to focus on yielding to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. How do you yield to that anointing? How did the apostles of old, the Catherine Coleman of now, the Benny Hins, all our the great servants, the great men of God, Apostle Amprene Chipepe, Vorale Kulelas, how are they yielding to, to the anointing? How do they manage to walk in power? And why is the church why are some in the church struggling to walk in power? I think it's, it's a question that must be answered without any form of biasness. We might just be straightforward with it and say, there is somewhere where the church is failing God. It's either we don't understand or we are very stubborn to yield to what God is saying. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for your power. Holy Spirit, you know more about this day. You know all about this day. Speak while listening. Take over. Take over, Holy Spirit, the faculty of our thoughts processes. Not only for me, but for every person we see. Have your way in us. Speak to us, our Father. We want to hear you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, there is a, a narrative that the moment a person gets born again, things become tougher in their lives. And people believe that this happens because you are born again. And that's not the case. Things don't become tougher in your life because you are born again. No. God expects you to be stronger because you are yielding to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So when we do not yield, we just get born again and continue the way we used to live. That's when we assume that things are tougher. We are not, we are not going where we're supposed to be. Hallelujah. Are we together? So this narrative is compounded by a lot of elements. But today I'm just going to focus on the few. I will use a story. I will use a story. You know, there was a race. One day, one king once instituted a race. And that race 
include runners going through the wilderness. And the king knew that no one will win that race. Not that people cannot run, but because of the setup that he has placed. So when the first group of people went to take on the race, there were people waiting there for them by the starting line. One of them says, the, the group of people said to the people who are going to run, you know that field that you are about to enter through, there are fierce animals there. Lions, hyenas, lepers, cheetahs, they will eat you alive. And the group of runners pretended as if they were going to run. They off ramped. <laughs> they went their way. They didn't want to run through the, the field because they were told. So a second group of runners came. They were told that, you know what, the field that you're about to go through there, there are a lot of snakes. Poisonous snakes. Poisonous snakes. And once they bite you, you die on the spot. The group, that second group of runners saying, okay, we'll run, but we'll off-ramp. We're not going through. The third group of runners came. They were told that, you know, you can go there, but yo, the bees, I mean, almost every tree, almost every bush there has those dangerous bees. So they will bite you. When they bite you, you, you won't survive. So as they were saying that, but there's one man who continued running. When they were talking, he was just looking at their face. He continued running. He ran through. He was not the fastest, nor the strongest runner, but he ran through. So on the other side of the finishing line, the TV crews were waiting for him there with the microphones and the cameras. They started asking him questions. I mean, everybody was afraid to run through this. How did you run? The man did not respond. They asked him in different languages. The man did not respond. Only to realize that the man was deaf. He couldn't hear. So he ran and finished the race because he was deaf. He couldn't hear any word of discouragement. You know, the anointing of the Holy Spirit wants you to be deaf to the voice of the world. It wants you to be deaf to what the world is saying. Because once you are able to hear everything, you won't do what God wants you to do. So the first aspect of the anointing, be deaf. I can see the disciples being told by Jesus Christ, go and tarry in Jerusalem and wait. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. I'm sure there were people who came to them. Peter, you have been here for seven days. Nothing has happened. Why don't we go fishing? Peter said, no. The master has spoken. I know. I know that what Jesus Christ says, it shall come to pass. And I'm sure other groups came to Mary Magdalene, Magdalene and Mary and, and the other Mary and all the women who were there, to all 120 disciples. They came with different suggestions. You have been here now for eight days. Nothing has happened. And the disciples said, no, Jesus Christ said, go and tarry. You shall receive power. And I'm sure others came. They said, you have been here for nine and a half days. Nothing is happening. 
What's wrong with you guys? Can't you see that this Jesus Christ of yours is making you crazy? They waited. Because they were not told that on the tenth day the Holy Spirit will come. He just said, go ye there and tell him. And wait for the power. Let me tell you one thing, child of God. If you do not know how to wait upon the Lord, you won't be able, you don't have the capacity to receive the anointing. Failure to wait leads to disobedience. If you can see that the anointing, how the apostles yielded to the anointing, the first thing that they did was to obey. Obey the word. The word that did not have the time frames. The word that, that was not specified. They said, go ye, you shall receive power. And they waited. They obeyed. I believe that a lot of circumstances happen because we are talking about normal people who are like me and you. Normal people who had families. One of the stories that I read that Peter's mother-in-law had fever that Jesus Christ healed him. Meaning Peter has a, had a family. But he went to a one particular place and waited for 10 days not knowing when is this Holy Spirit coming? He obeyed. He obeyed and stayed there. And the Bible said that on the day of Pentecost, they all received the power. But that was not it. As Peter was walking, Peter and John were walking. We, we shared about this to the temple. Again, they are acknowledging the name of Jesus. You see, you, you cannot be anointed without acknowledging the name of Jesus. It is not possible. They say to the beggar, silver and gold we do not have. What we have we give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. See, number one, be deaf. You, you can never be obedient to the anointing or to the Holy Spirit if your ears are all over. Satan has his people all over the place. Who are there to release the spirit of discouragement. Who are there to misplace you. And he does not use people who are far away. We can see in the beginning of the Bible, of the book, he did not use somebody else. He used the closest person, Eve. Even to this day, I want to put it to you that the biggest Distraction. Distraction. When the biggest distraction where people are distracted to serve is when the husband and wife do not agree on the same purpose. And we expect that, that family to move in the anointing. It's not possible. The biggest distraction is when you surround yourself with people who don't have the same purpose. That's why Jesus, that's why God said to Abraham, get out of your father's house. He knew that when Abraham is still in the father's house, he is going to serve the purpose of his father. Because they used, the Bible said, they used to be the worshippers of the stars. What am I saying? Number four, check what you are worshipping. Many of us are worshipping ourselves without being aware. Uh, on Tuesday, I was in Ignite House. Apostle said to my wife, you know, I, I beat your daddy too much. Because we, we had one meeting where gloves were off. He was telling me the truth. And one of the things that he told me is, indirectly was self-worship. 
people who worship themselves easily get offended. They offended, they get offended easily. And where there is offense, there is no anointing. Am I talking to someone tonight? Self-worship leads you to what? To offense. So we're just laying the foundation of yielding to the anointing. I'm believing God that we will, we will, go, we will go forward about it. Self-worship leads to offense. The moment you start looking and feeling offended, just know that pride had crept in. The Bible said Satan was the anointed cherub. cherub. He was the lead worshiper. Nobody worshipped like him. He carried all the anointing of worship in all creation. He was leading all creation to worship God. But what took that anointing away? Self. He said, I will mount. I will mount the beggar. In fact, he was saying that he's going to be higher than God. He will take over the purpose of God. Why? He, he saw what God was doing through him and self was, up, was, was risen. Hallelujah. So when we, if you want to yield to the anointing, number one, know that you don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not nice not to know. Ne? Yeah, say God... I, I'm, I'm, I don't know about this day. I, I don't know what you have planned on this day. All that I know is you know about this day. Holy Spirit, I want this day to be fruitful for your glory. Lead me. Lead me. So you, you don't wake up with your head knowledge. Because that is where we, we grieve him. Paul said, I wanted to go to Asia. Holy Spirit said, don't go. There are a lot of things that he wanted to do, and Holy Spirit denied him to do that. Romans 8.26 says, For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Holy Spirit pray for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. When, no, this, this is what I've learned, that when you don't know what to pray for as you ought, the Holy Spirit will. So that applies to the rest of your life. When, you know, when wake up and say, God, I do not know. I do not know what to do about this life. I do not know all that I know that, Father, you have done it already. Holy Spirit, lead me. He will be so excited. That finally, you are no longer hitting the brick wall. You are acknowledging my presence in your life. The biggest pain for every parent is seeing your child, your children failing under your nose because they chose not to listen to you. You see your children falling into one trap to the other because they chose not to listen to you. Amen. What is the purpose of the anointing? If you understand this purpose, God wants you to do that which you cannot do under normal circumstances. I was, yesterday I received a call from one of ours telling me that there is a situation in their house. I said, God, I don't know what to do. How do I pray for this situation? Holy Spirit gave me a scripture and I prayed for less than 10 minutes. In less than 15 minutes, I was receiving a WhatsApp. It is well. That which was a problem has been resolved. In less than 15 minutes. I prayed less than 10 minutes. Let me tell you what will Pastor D have done previously. I will have jumped into the car. Drive like a madman to the house. 
and go and play Jesus and not give them the solution. I was going to give, go give them a bodily comfort without a spiritual solution. But when I yielded to the voice of the Holy Spirit, the anointing came upon my mouth. I released the right words that changed the situation. Hallelujah. Say, I don't know what the Holy Spirit knows. Me say, like me say, I don't know what the Holy Spirit knows. You see, I, I love the way Jesus Christ yielded to the anointing. I would like you to write this. One way of reduce the anointing, remove fear. Do not surrender to fear. Write that one down. Do not surrender to fear. How so? When they say to Jesus Christ, Lazarus is dead. He never went, oh my God, there goes my reputation. What will people say about me now? I'm known to be the son of God. I've made the blind see. Now the one that I love the most has just died. No. He said, he's sleeping. Why? Acts 10, 38. How God anointed the Lord Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing those who were oppressed by the devil. When he he heard that he's dead. He said, he's sleeping. And he went there and he released. When he went there, check this. He looked up and said, Father, I know that you hear me always. He said, anointing comes when you acknowledge your relationship with your father. Knowing that is intact. Father, I know that you hear me always. He did not say, Father, oh God Almighty, you know, what am I going to do? Remember, your name and my name, our reputation is at stake. What are you going to do? No. Father, I know that you hear me always. That, that's the person that the Holy Spirit wants to use. Who knows the, 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 the type and the depth of the relationship that he has with the Father through the word. Father, I know that you hear me always. When, when he walks in there, he didn't say, Lazarus, if you want, come. Come. He said, remove this, roll away the stone. After they rolled away the stone, they said to him, by this time, master, he stinketh. But he knows the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me. Jesus Christ has declared those words. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Lazarus was kept captive by the spirit of death. But when the anointing is acknowledged, through the acknowledgement of the relationship with the father, even death becomes powerless. Hallelujah. And Lazarus came forth. He was made alive. So I, I want you who is here who is, and those who are listening to me. Don't allow yourself to be led astray by what you hear. Don't allow yourself to be led astray by fear. 
there is, there is an anointing that is waiting for you to activate it. All of you, even those who are watching me through the, you are anointed. Everything that Jesus Christ did, you can do. Now, let me repeat this. Everything that the master Jesus Christ did, you can do. That's why you are called by his name, Christ-like Christian. You carry the same power. You carry the same anointing. You carry the same ability. Your responsibility is to start stopping from hearing from the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness cannot dictate what should happen to us. Hallelujah. I'm just giving you this entry, this introduction of yielding to the anointing. The kingdom of darkness time to dictate what might happen to us is over. The time for the children of God to walk in power is now. Hallelujah. Your time to walk in power is now. Forget about your name. Forget about your surname. Forget about what happened in the past. Forget about what's happening in your family. Start declaring and acknowledging the one who saved you. The one who is living on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit, whom Jesus Christ said, I'm not leaving you alone. I'm leaving you with someone who is like me. If the Holy Spirit was a person, he would say, I'm the most ignored person alive. How much we ignore him. How much we don't even know that he's still alive around us. He's one person that the church has chosen to turn their back on. Why? Everything else has become important because their voices, the voices of everything else is more audible to the carnal ear than the voice of the Holy Spirit being audible to the spiritual ear. If we can dump what the canal ear is feeding to our spirit man and choose the menu from the king's table, king of kings. De Daniel, as you said it on Sunday, Daniel said, I'm not going to eat this because it will defile me. I'm refusing to eat this because it will defile me. I don't want to eat from the king's table to defile me. I don't want to eat from the worldly table. Why? Daniel was saying, I know what I'm carrying. I know the anointing that I have on the inside of me. If I allow this to come on the inside of me, I will be defiled. I won't be the man that God has ordained me to be. I won't be the woman that God has ordained me to be. Child of God, check what is defiling you. Remember, when you yield to the anointing, it's including closing doors to the outside world. When Daniel was yielding to the power of God, the king did not say, these are the foods dedicated to God's come and eat. They looked normal. They looked like normal delicacies. But because of his discernment spirit, he knew that he's supposed to be deaf. He's not supposed to be taking this to inside himself. Hallelujah. Make your choice, Ms. Alwani. Make your choice. Having laid this foundation of yielding to the anointing, 
We're going to go deeper into this. You will know how much power you carry. You will know that it is not the length of your prayer that makes things happen. It is the God on the inside of you. You had ever prayed for one hour and stand up confident that it is done. Something that somebody has prayed for 21 days. You pray for 21 days. You fast for 21 days. You come back with the results on something that someone has been waiting for a year. Why? The anointing within. Protect it. You know, in closing, I love what the anointing did to Philip. When Philip, you know, yielding to the voice of the anointing, Mr. Tris, when Philip was told by the Holy Spirit to go, he listened. And when he was obeying, he met the Ethiopian Enoch who was reading about Isaiah. He couldn't understand. And the Holy Spirit, please go and join the ministerial entourage. It was the Ethiopian Minister of Finance, today's language. He went there. He interpreted the word for him, revelation of the Holy Spirit. Guess what the anointing does to Philip? After Philip obeyed the Holy Spirit, preaching the word, he, after he baptized the Enoch, the Bible said he was taken by the Spirit. He was found kilometers away in Azotus, preaching the word of God. Why? The anointing has the ability to fast track you and take you to places that your flesh cannot because of obedience. When you yield to the anointing, you do great exploits. The Bible says the fishermen, when they were fishing, Jesus Christ borrowed their boats. They did not say, can't you see that we are fishing? They only told him after he was on their boat that we have, we have been toiling the whole night. Jesus Christ said, I'm the anointing upon. Throw your nets. And they did. And they caught a multitude of fish. Sometimes we can't get what you want. Not because God doesn't want us to have, but because we want to use our power. We don't want to submit a yield to the anointing. Amen. I've mentioned a lot of things at a go. But uh, next week we're going to spread them evenly. And then we're going to go through this series of yielding to the anointing. Because I, I want a church that will move by the power of God. Wherever you are, they should call you. Say, Masha, please come and pray for us. We have a situation. I was seated at work. People, two ladies came from another building. The other one said, Pastor, uh, we came here because we trust the God that you pray. They told me the situation. And they were telling me, I said to them, the person that you want me to pray for, you're not going to find uh, that person because what, you are, what is happening now the demonic spirits can hear, that, that person will disappear. And it indeed happened like that. We couldn't help the person. But why am I telling you this? That wherever you are, let people know the anointing you carry. Let them know that you are the solution. A church that is not yielded to the anointing cannot be the solution to the world. Can I repeat that again? A church that is not yielded to the anointing can never be the solution to the world. 
God is waiting for someone who's deaf, who can hear what the world is saying. God is waiting for someone who's obedient. God is waiting for someone who has a proper relationship with him, who will just say, Father, I know that you hear me. God is waiting for someone who will fail to acknowledge the situation and continue to acknowledge our Father in heaven. That's someone that God is waiting for. He's waiting for this church to rise up in anointing and be the church that Jesus Christ died for. Hallelujah. I would like us to stand up. I don't know what's going on in your life. Even you watching me through the media, I don't know what's going on in your life. But you know the, the hindrances of the anointing of God. You know why you can't walk in power. You know, the disciples were not taken to Bible school. But they, they were with Jesus Christ for three years. And can I tell you something? How they walked in the anointing, they did not have the written word of what Jesus Christ said. The New Testament was not yet printed. They had the spoken word. They, rem they remembered who spoke. And their relationship with the person who spoke activated the anointing. I'm not sure if you hear me. They knew how to yield to what he has said. They, were, they, they didn't have the ability to record Jesus Christ talking and go and listen to the sermon at home. They didn't have the tablet. They never had those. But the word that they had plus the relationship with Jesus Christ and their obedience to what they had Gave them the anointing. Today we are in a better position as a church. We have the spoken word at our disposal. Day and night, you can wake up and hear Jesus Christ speaks to you like he's here now with you. Whether you are waking up 12 o'clock midnight, the Holy Spirit will be waiting for you to anoint you for great exploits. Whether you are waking up 2 o'clock in the morning, he will never say you are disturbing my sleep. Because of the spoken word. You have the ability to walk in power. Your situation has got nothing to do with anything else but waiting for you to manifest what Jesus Christ has deposited in you. When you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. When you pray, believe that Jesus Christ is with you through the Holy Spirit. Because he said, I'll send someone like you, like me, he will teach you all things. I want us to imagine the disciples of old without the Bible, without any form of reference. They go about doing great exploits for God, raising the dead. I remember when they saw Peter, they said, Peter, come. Why? Dorcas is dead. They knew that Peter has been with Jesus Christ. And today there is no difference between you and Peter. Because the same commandment, he said, he who hears my word and obey my words, I and my father will come and abide in him, is still the same. That anointing is still available for you. 
is still the same. I want you to lift up your hands. And talk to your father. He wants to use someone here. Somebody's carrying somebody's healing. You are carrying someone's breakthrough. You are carrying a family's breakthrough. When you yield to the anointing, you will have that ability to deliver that family, to heal that someone, to speak the right ways. You will be able to say that the word that I speak <laughs> is life and there's power. Talk to him. Reconsitare capacia. Sendia ke pario ke. Zatore mbe kansita roshe. Rosoti rakape si andembo. Zeta riko sati vakasha. Mbe sendi ko uzaribe ke si andeng. Mbe siende 